hang on. We are going live. Hang on. The loading bar is loading. Well, this is my first time doing this, so it'll be. Uh... Well, hey. We have, All right, and we should start. be live. Okay, there's a little bit of a delay. It's a bit weird seeing myself on YouTube. Let me just turn down the sound for this. Hang on. Uh, okay, Ted, we are live on YouTube. Can you hear me? I can hear you, man. I'm ready to roll. Okay, excellent. Um, I just have one more thing to do. <clears throat> okay, so hello, YouTube, and uh, later on for the podcast, hello, everyone. I'm here with Ted, and uh, today we're going to be talking about the Mantis beings. But before we get into that, uh, it's been a big couple of weeks for UFO news with the David Grush story. Ted, are you up to date on that? Uh, I think so. So... David Grush has come forward and you know what so many great other channels are doing such a great job at this we won't you know we could regurgitate recycle we won't but I'll just give quick thoughts on it um he's come out with uh stunning claims uh the White House was asked about it they referred they referred the answer to or the question to the Pentagon and they've come out and flat denied it okay so obviously there's some sort of group in there who thinks that the, if they just deny it, then they're going to get away with it. They think they could still cover this up uh, and maybe they can. I don't know. I suppose at the end of the day, it's just going to be down to um, whatever uh, congressmen are going to be in those hearings and whether or not they're going to come forward with the information after they speak with Grush. So uh, the fate of all this, as I see it, is in the hands of politicians. <laughs> Any thoughts on it, Ted? Well, I agree with you. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, I've said, and I'm being repetitive here, but I've said numerous times over the years to people, and I think I've said it on the podcast, that the government it really is in a very awkward situation about all this, and they're trying to save face. But I, I truly believe knowing what I know about the aliens and their involvement with humans, from my perspective, the government took the sand years ago that it was for the best interest of the public that they don't know the truth. And I can see their position on that. However, we're living in times that are changing and that are different. Uh, I am supportive of this information coming out now. And I think, you know, the government's got, at some point, they have to acknowledge what they've done and why they've done it to satisfy people. But that's my take on it, Stuart. And you, you were, um, you saw the Las Vegas uh, UFO landing as well. Now I know you're you're a bit undecided about it, and to be honest, so am I. There's a couple of questionable things. Um, do you just want to give just a very quick uh, synopsis about what happened in Las Vegas? Well, this family there in in Las Vegas, uh, uh, if I remember correctly from the clip that I watched, they heard this loud boom noise and so they went out in the backyard trying to see what this was and and a light had been seen uh falling from the sky and they saw like hidden back behind a fence and and shrubbery they uh uh saw movement and got glimpses of what Appear, appeared to be non-human entities moving around there. And so they became very frightened. They called the police, but uh, uh, whatever was there managed to escape. Uh, they didn't see a craft as far as I remember, or did they, Stuart? Did they actually see a craft? I don't think they did, did they? Uh, he did say that he saw something cloaked outside. Um, he's, he said it was like, um, uh, he didn't say he saw like a solid thing, 
but it was like there was some kind of distortion outside. Right. Well, I tried to make out uh, what I could uh, from the video clip they were showing about the movement of entities. And I saw different things that, that I couldn't really identify. One, th <coughs> excuse me, one thing. One thing that stood out to me was it looked like I saw like a greenish looking, dark greenish looking face, but I wouldn't swear to that. Yeah. But, uh, one of the things that bothered me though about it <coughs> <coughs> was this light that, that followed from the sky. Goodness. I don't know why all of a sudden I can't talk. <laughs> Do you want to get a glass of water or something? I've got some water here. It seems like I'm running into all kinds of problems uh, during the night. And this morning, the computer messed up. And, and uh, it seems like I feel like I'm sort of being attacked this morning. I'm being honest uh, with everybody listening. I, I feel like from what's happened to me in the past few hours, I'm under attack. Yeah. And this happens sometimes, I've learned over the years, this happens sometimes when I start talking about a subject in which the aliens do not want you, the public, really to know and understand. And they try to silence me. Yeah. But I'm going forward now, getting back to the Las Vegas thing, uh, there was this light falling from the sky, which uh, they first indicated this might be the UFO coming down. However, then I read later that that light was seen by people all the way from Las Vegas to the West Coast, and they said it was a meteor. Well, if it was a UFO crashing in this backyard in Vegas, it would not be seen on the West Coast. Uh, so I, you know, I, I wasn't certain about that. And then they showed, uh, at first this circle in the backyard, this big circle, which would, uh, they gave the impression that the UFO had sit down in the backyard where this circle was. But then I read later that witnesses said that circle had been in their backyard for over a year. So that made me question the whole thing. So I'm not saying it was true or it isn't true. I just I just see some questionable things about this event. Yeah, okay. And uh, I think I'm in the same position as well. I don't want to say if it's, you know, I'm 100% believing it. Uh, but I saw some, I know it's kind of hard when you're looking at the video to see the aliens in the frame, like people have it slowed down frame by frame. But there's a couple other convincing videos as well. One of them was posted in the Reddit group um, when they're all stood next. You know, they're all outside looking into the, the back garden of where this event happened. And right next to the fence, there's like something moving around at the fence. And you can clearly see it. But at the time that it was filmed, these people aren't aware it's there. Do you remember that video? It, it looks like a big black guy looking at them through the fence. And then yes. also there's some sort of distortion with a uh, light as well. I remember uh, that. You know, either this it either is a hoax and that is like next level stuff that they would purposely do that in the hopes that someone on Reddit would notice, you know. Uh, but, you know, I'm undecided as well. Um, okay, so we are going to move now on to the Mantis beings, okay? Now, if you go on the internet or and you and you research, if you Google mantis beings, you get a lot of people's experiences, okay? And they generally seem to be accepted as a, a very old race, very wise. Uh, they're known as the caretakers of children. Uh, they're benevolent. Um, now, Ted, you're saying something completely different about them. So... I think we should start off firstly. When did you first encounter a mantis being? I didn't know that I had encountered a mantis being until uh, under under hypnosis with Barbara Barthlick. Uh, we reviewed an incident in my life in which uh, I, I, 
I encountered them in, in close proximity. I was on a craft where they were. And now I did describe to Barbara uh, on that first, very first, for those of you who have listened to all the podcasts or maybe read uh, Masquerade of Angels, uh, the, the very first uh, alien abduction, uh, hypnotic regression that we did that was brought out in the cotton field here in Alabama when I was a little boy and taken. And in that process, I had been uh, cloned. Now, there were creatures there that I saw on this large mothership where they had taken me. I did see some mantis creatures there and, and describe them, but I was not in a close encounter with them. I just saw them. Uh, that was the first time. Now, the, the, the next time was very vivid, very realistic, in which I had a up close and personal encounter with them. And that was a different uh, regression. So those are the only two types. Okay. And as far as them being known as caretakers for children, you've got a completely different view of what they're doing to the children, which is what? Well, you got to understand the nature of these aliens. We're dealing with uh, non-human entities, but we as humans want to make them act and think like humans because we can relate to them better. And I, I, you know, I deal with people, talk with people all the time who are very pro alien. They really think and feel that they're here for our best interest, but yet I have not run across any evidence that makes me feel that's true. Uh, all the encounters that I've had with them have not been positive. Uh, they've done some positive things to trick me into thinking they're positive, but I learned that these were, were lies and deceptions. Okay, so we have to get to the fact, to the nature of, of these mantis. Now, in a small, tiny, uh, insectoid uh, mantis there that you find on a bush by your house or in the forest, what does it do? Uh, just because it's been uh, genetically created to be human size or bigger, taller, doesn't change the nature of, of what it actually is. And it may have been, its brain may have been genetically improved so that it has rational, uh, rational the ability to think, create, and act. Uh, outside and beyond the insectoid position in its natural state. But that doesn't mean that its true character has changed. And it's still an insect. It still behaves like an insect. And it feeds on flesh of other creatures. Yeah. Birds, I, lizards, I, anything right, else everything them. else that it can get. And I witnessed this on a ship where I was. I saw a craft come in with children, babies. I'm going to say they were probably the oldest one was maybe four. They were four down to toddlers, diapers. And they were brought in and they were taken off of this uh, circular round craft onto a conveyor belt. And, and they were now the children were kind of, uh, I'm not going to say totally paralyzed because they were moving their arms and legs, but the children were somewhat like in a coma. Uh, it's not like they had their, true faculties uh, mentally. Uh, they were just sitting there like they were in La La Land, but they rode this conveyor belt inside a compartment. And this is gross and this is horrible. And, and but I, I, this story has to be told. People have to know what we're dealing with. 
this was a processing center where these children were being prepared for food to feed these mantis. And they were taken in there and all of their extremities, their, their arms, legs, their heads were all removed by a laser knife type thing. They just seared right across it and it dropped off. And these parts of the bodies were packed in containers to be sent somewhere else. I, I'm not sure. I didn't witness where they were taken. Uh, but then the torso cavity was split open. It was put on the continuing this conveyor belt, and it went down onto what looked like it wasn't, but the closest thing I can say to describe, it was like a conveyor belt, but it rode very slowly as if it was like a, a buffet line. And these tall mantis, and there was bunches of them, they were feeding on the organs inside the cavity of these remains. Oh, now, is this gosh. gross and sick enough? But I saw it. I even told Barbara, I said, my God, it looked like they were eating into a big baked potato. And, and now, when I've told this story, people say, you're just trying to horrify everybody. Well, you know, I've been quiet for years. I didn't want to tell people what I knew to protect all of you listening. This is one of the reasons I say the government has has gone to extreme measures to make sure that we don't know what's really happening because they can't fix it. And 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 I think one of the main reasons, and I'm not I'm not taking up for the government, but I think I can see what would I have done, what would you have done in that position to have recovered those craft that craft at Roswell and found such remains inside that told them probably what was going on, but there was absolutely nothing they could do to stop it. Of course, they lied to the whole world. They didn't want the panic Christ. that this would cause. And now here I am coming along all these years later, and I'm telling you people listening this horrible story but i saw it and now i have to back it up with the fact that after i recovered from the shock that i went through of reliving this experience and witnessing what i saw and believe me people it took me some time i was an absolute the old uh, expression basket case. I was an emotional wreck and, and I couldn't even work for days. It left me mentally, spiritually, and physically crippled to have relived this event and saw what I saw and, and the heartbreak I experienced from it. And Barbara then comes back at later after I'm able to talk with her more about this because uh, momentarily I had told her, I said, this is it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing any more regressions. I can't handle it. Yeah. And she came back later and she said, Ted, and she got out some records with no names on it. And she had, I'm on, I don't remember exactly, but I'm going to say more or less seven cases of other people that she had worked on that had witnessed the very same thing did you say seven i i think there was around seven cases that she had done hypnotic regressions with before before me some of them several years that had witnessed the, the basically the same thing right and ted when did you discover this knowledge? Was it back in 1994 with Carla, or was this? It... No, this was after Carla's death. Barbara right. and I continued working, but I had kind of dropped off the uh, uh, the public trail. Yeah, uh, my life had been threatened. I knew what had happened to Carla. 
uh, Barbara had been threatened and she wanted me to continue this work because she said that I had the ability to open up and see these things in a very true and realistic and explainable way where others had been lost and mixed with a lot of, uh, uh confusion and and uh uh screen memories and what have you and it wasn't altogether clear so she thought that she needed me to really enhance this work and uh barbara being such a dear and precious friend to Car carla and i both that i kept working with her i worked with her all these years that i was silent but we were still doing work. I would go to Tulsa whenever I could and stay a few days and we would do a few regressions. And then I would come home and try to emotionally get over what I'd seen for a long time. Uh, I, I, it's been a, a very heartbreaking experience for me over these years. And can I just ask you, how come Barbara never released this information? Because we were threatened and, 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 and because she felt that eventually they would do away with her. So she even had, uh, uh, there was one man who tricked her out of some of the information and she found out later he was a government agent. Uh, she had uh, UFOs hover over her home at night. Uh, there were a lot of things going on with Barbara that kept her silent. Okay, so it was kind of like, for her own sake, she needed to know the information. But at the same time, she kind of felt she couldn't release it. Would at that the same be time, how, uh, but we, we did reach a point later, and this was in... Uh, uh, I can't remember right now, you know, I'm 80 years old, please forgive me, but do you, do you recall what year Barbara died? Was it 2011 or something? Wasn't it? Maybe around that time. Uh, I, I had, uh, returned to Alabama and, and had, was taking care of my elderly parents until they passed. And then, <clears throat> Uh, out of boredom and and sitting at home with nothing to do, uh, I took a uh, I took a job as a as a people greeter at Walmart uh, for three days a week just to get out of the house. And so I had been doing this a few years, but Barbara and I would talk a lot on the telephone. We were very close; so that we almost spoke daily. And uh, so she had talked me into let's do a, 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 a follow-up book to Masquerade of Angels. And it, so I finally agreed that I would do it reluctantly because I knew the danger involved, but I, I finally agreed that I would do it. And I, I went to the personnel department at Walmart and I put in a request to move to a Walmart in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's where Barbara lived. And I was going uh, to move back there so I would be close and we could work on this book. And then shortly after is when this vehicle came out of absolutely nowhere, just appeared on the street going, and it was like a huge black windows, no tag on it, Humvee. It came at 100 miles per hour and hit broadsided their Barbara and her husband's vehicle and ex expelled them into the air in the car whirling. They were both thrown from the vehicle. Of the car landed on Barbara's husband and crushed him. He died instantly. Barbara was caught between the door and the vehicle and wasn't crushed, but she had both legs, both arms, and ribs uh, broken. Uh, Barbara almost died, but she eventually recovered to, to a certain extent that she could walk with a walker and get around on her own. But in spite of all of that and what happened, she still 
said, we owe it to the public to get the truth out there because the, if we wait on the government, it's never going to happen. And she said, I feel we owe it to our, our to, we owe it to humanity to let them know what's really going on behind the scenes, behind the masquerade. And so I, I can, said, okay, and I'm still going to move to Tulsa. We're going to do this. Within two weeks, she had this massive stroke and she died. They found, they found her dead. Yeah. So we didn't get to happen. It, you know, it just didn't come about. Yeah. Okay. Um, so was this at Dulce, this, uh, this uh, mantis Man. buffet. I don't know where it was. No. Okay. So when when did when did the event happen? What year? I, I was taken. I w- I was taken out out of, out of my home, and uh, it was it happened uh, when I was in Amarillo, Texas. When I was living there, I lived there three years. And it it was it was an, an abduction that happened there, and I don't know where I was taken. Now, uh, Amarillo is you know as the crow flies, is not that far to Dulce, yeah, maybe okay. by car, maybe like about a four four and a half hour drive by car from Amarillo to Dulce. So it was in that area. It's possible, but I don't know for sure. I just know that I was taken there. And th- they did things to my body. They put headphones on my ears. I think they were trying to program me for something. And maybe they, maybe they did. I'm not sure what they did to me. Uh, I just remember uh, the headphones being and being put in a chair that looked like a dental chair. And it laid back and they did different things uh, to my ears, to my eyes. Uh, they took blood. Uh, they had, like I said, the headphones on my head. And then in the process uh, of being removed from that room where those things were happening, we went into an area where I was to get back on a UFO to be brought, a returned, I'm assuming, back to my bedroom. And that's where I saw another uh, UFO where these children were being brought out of this ufo on that conveyor belt and then it's like i don't i don't know if they did it or if there was a friendly force of aliens in charge i'm not sure but i remember i suddenly found myself in the room where the feeding was taking place and that's christ and that's the story i don't have any better details but that's what i saw and Barbara confirmed that I was not the only one that had ever seen this uh, situation. And Ted, so, White, yes, White. they're they're the caretakers of the children. Yes, they certainly are. You can see that deception and that lie. Uh, they're insectoids, and they're behaving like insectoids. Why do we expect anything different out of a mantis? Yeah. And Ted, why children? Well, <clears throat> I, I would say that one cavity of a child's chest with the stomach, the heart, the liver, everything, that's uh, a meal. Okay. That's a meal. Uh, a human size would be maybe, in my opinion, bigger than what they need. It might be a waste. And I can assure you from what I've seen, these aliens, these entities waste absolutely nothing. Mm. They have creatures of all kinds to feed on every part of the body. All the blood goes to the grays. Uh, uh, the, the children, we just discussed where that goes. Uh, it, it, anyway, just think about it. I don't. I don't need to describe it for you. You can imagine. Yeah. You can imagine. And and they're not clean. Uh, you know, uh, 
the, the very putrid smell in these UFOs. They're not clean at all. They're nasty. They poop in the floors. And, and then they have uh, uh, ins another insect like big uh, roaches or whatever that come and eat it all and clean it up. That's the way it's cleaned up. Oh. UFOs are often described as hospital-like. <clears throat> Excuse me. UFOs are often described as hospital-like. Very clean, no rivets or anything, very smooth. Well, now, when I was taken on that childhood abduction out of the cotton field, the one where I was cloned, I was taken to a mothership. Yeah. Now, the mothership had human workers in there. Uh, it was clean. And it did not smell bad. I'm talking about these small craft that are like the taxis right. and the operators, these insects that operate it, you know. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, all right, there's a couple of comments I'm just going to read, okay? Uh, this is from people on Reddit talking about their own experiences. <clears throat> all right, this one is Tiny Cubes. She says, I've never heard of mantis beings before, and I'm still learning so much. I was visited by one about a year ago when I was very pregnant. Okay. I woke up in the middle of the night and it was standing at the foot of my bed. It was very tall, almost hitting the ceiling of my room and its body was cloaked, but its head was brown and looked like a praying mantis head. I was caught very off guard, but said out loud, what do you want? And I made a clicking noise and I said, go away. And I shut my eyes for a second and it was gone. When I opened them again, Seeing others have experiences makes me feel validated. Okay. So she had this praying mantis appear when she was pregnant. All right. Ted, what's your best guess to what was going on there? Well, they're overseeing the pregnancy because they want that baby. Right. That, um, that's not, I, I assure you, based on my experiences, they were not interested in her. Right. Uh, and, and, and they're known as the caretakers of children. So, you know, they're just waiting on dinner to be ready. And you know what, folks, I'm going to read these three comments. Okay. And I didn't have to go far to find a correlation in what they're all saying. All right. Um, so here's the next one. Okay. This one's from dark Rose 50. As a child, I remember vivid vividly talking to a kind woman where her head was displayed in a fuzzy blue and black hologram. She had big eyes. It was hard to make out the face, and I asked her if she was an ant queen. She said yes, but it felt like she was humoring me. She was like a kindly kindergarten teacher, okay? During the interaction with the being on the fuzzy hologram, I remember being in a dark room and feeling like there were people behind me. At times, I wonder if these people were aliens. Maybe some mantid folks. At times, I wondered if it was a vivid dream. At times, I wondered if it was both. I'm not quite sure what to think. It could have been an episode of Sleep Terror. I had the stereotypical abduction experience when I was 15. Bright light like it was daylight coming from the window. Robed figures at the foot of my bed. Being totally fine with this. Thinking this is an alien in a cloaking suit. Seeing myself remotely floating to the ceiling. Panicking that I would be crushed and then darkness. My daughter, okay, here we go. My daughter was has sleep paralysis. She saw a man eating a rat on her floor. She saw a tall, tall robed mantis in the kitchen at night. My what if time machine can't help but make a connection that maybe the man eating a rat was a mantis in a cloaking suit. Before that, I've never discussed this topic with her. It's certainly a head scratcher and at the very least, it's an in interesting coincidence. So she had her own experiences. And then later on, her daughter came up to her to tell her about something that she had seen. Um, now, she's drawn a connection to the man eating the rat in the room, which really is a head scratcher. Ted, do you think it's possible that a mantis being showed up and then a rat just happened to be going by and just ate the thing? Well... I don't know. I've I've never experienced anything where a rat or anything like that uh, got got involved in the picture. Uh, I've had my own uh, cats and dogs with me at times, but they 
paralyze them you know, with paralysis like they do the humans and so they won't attack or, or do anything. Uh, as far as the rat, I, I really don't have an answer for that. I would, I would say this, I would, I would say it's possible that that was not a rat. That was an illusion they created to make think that it was a rat and it could have been a fetus that had been pulled out. Okay. Now this is in the daughter's room though. Well, how old was the daughter? Uh, she didn't say, but you think that maybe they deliberately impregnated this girl. It would depend on how old she is. But how, how many, you know, you, you've heard or read some of Bud Hopkins cases where, that he worked on where some of these young women were hatcheries. Yeah. They kept that's coming right. and take. So, that's right. that, you know, and well, Barbara had so many cases of that. It was incredible. Uh, uh, where young women are just used and they, they like to start them young because they're healthier. They don't have to care for them as much because the young, a young mother is, is her body is just uh, very healthy for that situation. Whereas an older woman, they may, they may need to do a lot more work to keep the fetus growing until they're ready to harvest. Right, so it's a completely screen memory. It's not yeah. a tall man on a rat. It's a mantis on a fetus. I wouldn't. I wouldn't count on that being real. I would say it's an illusion to hide what they were actually doing. Yeah. And see, of th course, they would not want that that young girl to see that they had possibly removed a fetus from her. Uh, they they would want a screen memory, and they probably wanted her to think a rat got loose in the room, and we killed it for you to protect you. Yeah, okay. Because that's the way they work. It's all they're masters of deception. You really can't believe anything uh, th that they tell you. Uh, all these people that buy into this, you know, I'm sorry, I hate to pop your bubble, but you're being tricked. Right. Now, this is the last comment, okay? Uh, and then a couple of people on Reddit have some questions as well, all right? Um, so, um, B. Jimar, okay? My connection to the insect praying mantis began when I was a child. Their strange appearance terrified me. For some reason, the insect would appear in the strangest places, places that were unnatural for a natural dwelling creature, always close, all right? I never gave it a second thought until a mantis being manifested before my eyes many years later. It didn't communicate with me. It just stared silently. My daughter was with me when this occurred. It was about six foot behind her. She had no idea. My shock and fear was replaced by parent, uh, parental instinct. And I decided very quickly I needed to maintain composure so that she wouldn't turn around and discover the source of my reaction. With every fiber of my being, I began talking to the mantis in my head telling it not to touch or disturb her i would give her i would give my life to protect her and she was ready to do and was ready to do so the protective adrenaline was so strong i think i could have lifted a car in those moments these the mantis disappeared after what seemed like forever however it was only about 10 seconds i have had a number of uap sightings since and when I meditate, they occasionally appear still. Sometimes I'll get hit with prophetic dreams as well. None of them good. Always about famine and destruction of our planet. Does not sound familiar. Okay. I live across the street from a river and have seen numerous UAPs there. The most recent was yesterday. Of course, it was gone when I returned with my phone. I wish someone here would take notice and perform some sort of investigation in the area. I live in a building and have recently discovered other tenants have also had unusual paranormal experience. It's the water. What is the connection to water? I would love to hear from others who live close to water and have seen slash experienced things. So she's talking to her daughter and a praying mantis appeared behind and then instantly she went into protective mode. Did you think she knew subconsciously maybe something had happened to her before? 
And I she, do. Yeah, and she thought I this strongly is... would feel that because yeah. she sensed it somewhere buried within her that alarm went off. Yeah, something that had uh, happened to her. Uh, she didn't turn around and try to face it out of curiosity and say, "Oh, an alien mantis." Let's talk. She went into her fear mode for her daughter. Yeah. Specifically so her daughter uh, as well. Yes. That's obvious that she, there's been a uh, an experience somewhere in her past that allowed her to have this feeling or reaction. Yeah. Okay. That's my so, opinion. And what about this water thing? Well, they have to have water. True. I mean, uh, uh, you know, they... They've been seen hovering over lakes, rivers. Uh, they take on water. Actually, it just reminded me of the, uh, remember we watched the UFO connection and they actually use the water to travel around. They they do. And in this uh, uh, apartment building there where she lived, uh, she's obviously a connecting link to the UFOs, uh, just like I've been. They've been involved with me my entire life. And I'm finding as we move forward, it has affected many members of my family, you know, and we've had my niece on here talking about, and she's still having periodic experiences. Well, I'm finding out, uh, there are a number of people blood link in my family that have had events that are probably UFO related. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I would say with this woman and her daughter, since this is an ongoing thing and she sees these UFOs frequently that she is a link to some group of them. And she's just part of their food chain. Right. I mean, I don't think they pop in for social visits. Believe me, they don't. And the fact that they attack people in the middle of the night, they come when you're sleeping, when you're the most vulnerable, that doesn't speak very well of their character. And, 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 and I appeal to all of you listeners, use some logic here in the behavior of these creatures. Uh, actions speak louder than words. What are they doing for us? It's so fantastic. Uh, if, if our government has gotten any improved technology out of it, good for them. But I assure you, they did it with our scientists digging and learning and experimenting to get what they've got. I do not for one minute believe these aliens just walked in and say, look, we want to teach you how to do this or that or the other. Yeah. Uh, it don't happen. So look at the character, all of you, look at the character of these creatures. What are they doing for us? It's so positive. Nothing that I'm aware of. If they save somebody's life, it's because they want to feed on you later. They, every, they they're very self-serving. They're out for themselves and they put such a fantastic, con job on humanity right i uh yeah they've been here 75 years probably longer and uh no, it this goes whole back to biblical days yeah. my friend it does and, and this whole idea of like you know oh well they've got a prime directive and they're just watching us because we've nuclear weapons and but then like they're just doing the opposite like they're they're definitely influencing our culture you know, appearing and disappearing and then uh, kidnapping people and, you know, people who don't get returns. I'm finding it very, it's getting harder and harder for me to see a very positive spin on this. Um. All right. So moving on to. Well, so, can I, let me throw something yeah, in. Go for it. It just popped in my mind. I've mentioned it before to, uh, uh, I think I wrote about it on Reddit. <clears throat> Let's talk about briefly. The, these all these uh, intricate, beautiful, artistic designs and wheat fields, the crop circles, yes, and th in different parts of the world. All right, here they go and destroy a great part of some farmer's crop. Did they put money in his bank account to pay him for that? 
No, they didn't. But people are so dazzled with the amazing artwork and baffled by it, they don't look at the fact that it did no good whatsoever. Yeah. What good came out of doing that? Deception, conning. Uh, people say, oh, God, they're so intelligent. Look at what they've done. You know, we got to greet them and welcome them to improve our planet. And they're waiting anxiously for the day for them to start sitting down. What about the cattle mutilations? I, re I read one story where one uh, out west in one of the state, Montana or somewhere, one man who was a large cattle rancher lost hundreds and hundreds of cattle. Or he eventually went out of business because of cattle mutilations, where they're taking these cattle, ripping them apart to get the parts that they need. And, and, of course, I've seen and witnessed, and Barbara Barclay did too, through other cases where the, these cattle parts are being used to make big vats where they grow and birth uh, baby infants for their cloning program. You know, what good is all this for us? How, what are we gaining out of all of this? People start asking yourselves the right questions instead of being dazzled by their deception. Yeah. I beg you to do this. Yeah. <clears throat> I know far, uh, farmers aren't compensated for the gloss of the cattle loader. Um, uh, all right. Um, so this question is from appropriate being. Okay. Uh, how intertwined are the elite abduction of children and the alien abduction of children? Why do they want children so badly? How involved are the elite involved with the aliens? Okay. Uh, Ted, do you understand what she means when she says elite? Well, maybe leading people on the planet, humans. Yeah, yeah. Is, is it, I mean, that would be what I would think she meant. Yeah. I noticed there's one thing you always come back to, and that is Eisenhower. The fact that he may have been cloned. Uh, when he had that m meeting with um, the ETs. My gut feeling that he was. He, yeah. So is there he some... was programmed. He was, I, in my opinion only, he was programmed to not actually see what had happened to him and to trust them enough to do an exchange program to for, for an improvement in technology he allowed them and bought into and believed their interest in humanity was for genetic purposes only they were trying to improve their species and they needed to study the the anatomy and biology of the human makeup and he bought into this but all that did was allow them to kick in this humongous cloning program and this and, and program of human deception so that we'd never figure out what they were actually doing in exchange for a little of, of, of technology. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it's all very one-sided. I mean, we've been, we are, we are the food source for these aliens worldwide. Yeah, And they have motherships out there and colonies maybe on other planets that we're not sure about. But I suspect that they do, even on the moon. And we are their primary slaves and food sources for them. Yeah, well, that's what she means in her comment by the elite. Eisenhower would be considered the elite. I would so, think so. So I, I don't think they consciously know what they've done. I don't. I don't believe Eisenhower for one second knew what he had done. I think he thought he had done something good for humanity. Right. He may have learned before his death that he had been duped, but I, I'm not sure that he ever learned it. All right. And um, what about like royal family around the world? Is there any connection there? Well, 
conspiracy theories that I just don't buy into. Do I think Queen Elizabeth was an alien and, and that she uh, worked with the aliens to control uh, uh, the British Empire? No, I don't think that God rest her soul, but I don't think for one minute she had any, any idea or was connected in any way. Now, they may have made visitations and programming and an abduction with her or her family, but I don't think they were aware of it. Yeah. It would make sense though, wouldn't it, for them to control the leaders of the population? Sure. Sure. Yeah. But that just helps their program. Okay. I mean, they, they, they deceptively create situations to deceive humanity so that there is the least resistance for what they are doing. Okay. I mean, when, when our listeners start listening to the fact of what I'm telling them, and maybe at some point, some of them will start saying, you know, Ted's got a point there. Uh, I never looked at it that way. Maybe we need to start thinking about this in a different way now. And I'm hoping in some way that I do this for my fellow human beings. Uh, if I do that, I feel like what I've come in this world to do, I'm, I'm achieving it. Right. Even if it's just a handful of you. And uh, why do they want children so badly? I think we already answered that. It was snack size more than yeah, anything. Right. It's just a feed source. <clears throat> All right, and the next one is from Comprehensive P. Have the entities that Ted Rice had encountered with ever speak to him about the future of humanity? It's yes, all doom and no. gloom, let me just guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Back in the 70s, when I was living in Atlanta, Georgia, and studying with people to uh, achieve my certification for mediumship through the National Spiritualist Association of Churches, I had some visions that we've talked about before that affected futuristic humanity. But never did I see like the year 3000 or, or that far ahead what, what was being shown to me possibly was possibly was in our lifetime, but you got to remember, and you know, we've had our guest speaker, Janet Smith on talking about these deceptive and illusionary psychic uh, visions that, that people have had that actually stir up people and get them frightened and scared and, but yet they never happen. And, and so realizing all this and knowing what I know now, I don't buy into these visions that I saw because they, uh, that was a popular time back in the seventies for that sort of thing. And people looking at the world's changing. Look at all the people, if you go back and read, that moved to Arkansas in the mountains up there to escape uh, flooding, worldwide flooding. Uh, people that set up settlements up in uh, some of the Canadian provinces where they were told it would be a safe area, but yet nothing has ever happened. Uh, it, this is, these were just... Uh, Psychic phenomena is, is a program run by alien, these aliens that they've installed into humanity. And so they instill some of these visions into different ones to share with the others to get them excited. And it's a control method. They're just controlling us through, through these uh, they're not really going to happen. I, I would trust if you really want visions that are probably going to be true, read the Bible. Christ. Read the Bible and, and trust more into those visions 
than what you're getting from a psychic, you know, and I'm speaking against what I used to do. I used to be a very active psychic. I did readings for people all the time, but I learned where it was coming from and I learned the deception involved in all of it. And I just don't buy into it anymore. Do I still get premonitions and well heavy? Yes, I do periodically, but I trust the source now from where it's coming from because I analyze the whole situation before I respond to it verbally. Right. I want to make sure I know what I'm talking about and what I'm saying, is it good for the person, this information? Or is it some deceptive thing that could mislead them? Yeah, okay. I'm responsible for what I tell you. And I want to make sure what I tell you is wise. Yeah, okay. Well, what have they shown you? I I remember you talked about a flood before. A giant wave. Okay. They showed me at one time this huge, huge tsunami that was maybe, maybe, I'm not sure. Don't hold me to this, but I'm going to say it could have been 200 feet high or higher. And it came in, the part that they showed me was the east, the southern east coast and into the Gulf of Mexico. And it came in and it flooded all the way into middle of Alabama uh, uh, and into parts of northern Mississippi. Most of uh, Louisiana was was gone except for up near the Arctic, what they call the Arctic area, which is the uh, Texas, Arkansas and Louisiana corner where, where they meet that that uh, area did not go underwater. Uh, so they showed all this to me and I bought into it and I was terrified and I warned people, but nothing's ever happened. Yeah. yeah. I've learned differently now. I'm not going to tell you that that's going to happen because I know how deceptive this is and look at the lives it affected when I told people this. Look at the lives it affected. I know people that moved to the mountains because I told them that. Yeah. You know, I don't want that responsibility anymore. It's wrong. And I think they also showed you a scenario where there was cavemen restarting civilization. Is that right? Hmm. I'm lost on that. Uh, they were uh, living. They hey, were living. Hey, I'm. I'm I'm 80 years old with a few months be 81. I recently had a stroke. Forgive me, but right at the moment I've lost that Stuart. I don't remember. It. How, how are you feeling by the way? Stroke wise? Well, the speech has come back very well. Thank you. Good Lord. Uh, the, the uh, numbness and the, and the feeling on the left side of my body and my mouth, that has gone away. Uh, but the doctors told me that the uh, damage done by the stroke would be permanent, but my brain would, would slowly begin to compensate for that loss, and I would feel back and be acting normal. And I'm getting there. The, the, uh, I'm feeling very good physically. Uh, mentally I'm doing pretty good, I think from my age and everything that I've been through, but, uh, I still, I haven't regained the ability to walk very well. I have, I still have to walk with a walking cane or a walker and, uh, they still don't want me driving except maybe very slowly on back streets. I can't get in heavy traffic because my responses now are very slow compared to what they used to be. I can't walk very far. I give out. So that's where we are. But hey, I'm still here, still kicking, just not very high. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still here doing the podcast. I'm, 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 I, I, feel, I feel I'm a teacher. I'm trying to get all you listeners to start listening to what I'm saying and start giving it enough credit that it 
what I'm saying might be real, but everything that I, I tell you, other cases have validated it. Yeah. I'm not the only one. Everything that I went through, Barbara pulled out of her files, other cases that we compared that were similar to everything that I've told you. So I'm not unique in the fact that I was the only one. I was unique in the fact that I understood it and explained it better. Yeah. Okay. And on that note, is there anything you want to say before we go? Well, all of you know that have listened to the podcast. I'm a great animal lover. And, uh, I, I, we have where I live, a neighborhood watch on, on, online. And, uh, I've recently joined that and, and a lot of my neighbors in the community within a few miles of this area, uh, we share information back and forth online with, with, with this link. And I'm finding more and more people out there are finding little cats and dogs that other people have put out and abandoned them. And that breaks my heart. We are responsible for these creatures and they need us and they have pain and feelings. <clears throat> I call on everybody to do your very best. If you have a, a, an animal, a pet that you no longer can take care of, there are agencies and there are people that will help you relocate these animals. Do it, people, in the right way. Stop being cruel and putting out some baby kitty that you think is going to be able to take care of itself. Be All responsible. Right. All right, till the next time,